Chapter 9, Lesson 1, Launch Images. A launch image is the first thing a user will see as soon as they open the app. The idea is that it's simply a placeholder image and not your user interface, so the app will feel quick and responsive while the processes of your app are actually loading up. So it's simply an image. In this lesson, I'll show you how to add in launch images for every single iPhone size currently on the market and how to deal with them. Launch images are a number of different sizes to account for the numbers of different sized iPhones out there. Now, your launch image can be anything because it is a picture. Um, you're going to need a simple PNG file in the correct size, but Apple does recommend that you create a blank version of your user interface so it seems like the app is launching as soon as you open it up. And then, of course, once it loads, that blank user interface, that placeholder image will go away. However, the user interface will then be loaded, so it gives a feel that the user interface has loaded up in there. Apple recommends against it, but I use mine to display my logo so people know that they're using an app made by me. Apple doesn't recommend using it as an app entry experience, such as a splash screen. They don't recommend using an about window. And lastly, they don't recommend using it for branding elements. Right now, you're only watching part of this series. The full course includes many more lessons, including how to monetize and submit apps to the App Store. Click the link in the description now to check out the full unabridged course and to create a fantastic source of passive income. Now let's get back to the lesson. In Xcode, I'm going to open up a new single view application. Now, when we first generate our single view application, you'll notice we do have a file named launchscreen.xib. Essentially, what this holds is the project's name. I named mine launch demo, and it also says your organization's name, mine is my own name, and copyright 2014, all rights reserved. Now, yes, you can do launch images through an XIB file like launchscreen.xib. However, they're kind of hard to work with, so I'm going to show you the traditional method, which is putting in an image. So notice, if we go ahead and run this project now, you'll see what is our launch screen. You'll notice, as soon as the app opens, you'll see the launch screen. The first thing you see is the launch screen. You saw a launch demo pop up before our view did. Now, obviously, a launch demo like this gives a very basic feel, and you want to custom feel your app. So what we're going to do is go into our project and in app icons and launch images that header we want to click use asset catalog and we want to migrate it now on launch screen file we just want to highlight it and delete it and keep that blank so now what we can do is go to our images.xc assets file and if you don't already have one you're going to want to right click and do new launch image um, mine was pre-generated i'm guessing because i clicked use asset catalog so you need to do right click new launch image if you don't already have a launch image. Now, of course, in the right here, we'll see some settings. I do want for iOS 8 and later, and I do want for iPhone 6 and prior. So now that we have our launch image file set up to accept all sizes for all portrait iPhones, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the files we need to add. We only need one copy of the one times iPhone. This is the non retina iPhone. The size of this is 320 by 480 pixels. Then of course we need the retina version of the file we just dragged in. This one is 640 by 960 pixels. We also need to put that same file in our iPhone portrait iOS 7 and 8 so we can go ahead and do that. So we do need two of the two times retina. And then of course we need our size for our iPhone 5 and iPhone 5s. This is the retina 4. The size of this is 640 by 1136, so it is the same width, however it has a longer height. We do have to have two of these because we need one for the iPhone portrait on iOS 7 and 8. Now of course we have our iPhone 6 sizes or our iOS 8 sizes. The Retina HD 4.7 inch is 750 pixels by 1334 pixels. And by far the largest size overall is the Retina HD 5.5 inch. This image is 1242 pixels by 2208 pixels. That's a rather large image that's actually higher than 1080p if it was in portrait. Now these images can obviously be whatever you want, you just need to ensure that they are the correct size. Notice that they also have to be PNG 
file types. It's useful to use launch screen as either a loading screen. Apple recommends these launch images be essentially empty versions of your user interface. The reason Apple wants this is because they want the user to feel like the app has instantly loaded, even though it's only displaying an image of the interface that actually is not the interface. And then of course, as soon as your in interface loads, the user will see the user interface simply instantiate with everything it's just loaded. I personally use the screen to display my logo like I've input right here. Let's go ahead and select the iPhone 4S simulator to see our two times launch image. Now when we run this project, you'll notice that boom, our launch image will pop up. If we go to iPhone 5S, so this is the Retina 4 version of the image, you'll notice we have our launch image pop up as soon as the app loads. If we go to the iPhone 6, and run the project, you'll see the Retina HD 4.7 inch image load. And finally, if we run on the iPhone 6 Plus simulator, you'll see the largest of all the images, the Retina HD 5.5 load up. So that's how to have a launch image. It's very important that you have one. I don't believe Apple will accept your app if you do not include one. Remember, as always, Apple provides documentation for most of their stuff, including launch images. If you want an incredibly detailed report on launch images, I suggest you go to Apple's documentation. Launch images are, of course, in the iOS developer library, but they're in the section that is, which is basically Apple's documentation on how to interface well with humans. The human interface guidelines are simply a way for Apple to tell you best practices to creating a UI and designing a, an experience for humans to effectively use your app. Remember, this course releases new lessons every Wednesday and Thursday of every week. Subscribe now to not miss them.